The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of my Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, grow the video. Okay, just a heads up. If you guys are wondering why the last four minutes of this video look different than now, it's because I, um, okay, let's, let's get into it. I filmed that section separately and then I did the other section voiceover, but my voiceover audio got fucked. So yeah, we're re-recording it on camera. Mainly because I don't have the time to sit and edit another voiceover. I was too irritated. Anyway, but hey y'all, it's Hariana and I'm back with another video. Hi, hello, how are you doing? My name is Hariana and welcome to, or welcome back to The Pirate Ship, also known as Harry Hook's Pirate Ship. I am the captain, you are not my first mate. I don't got no first mate because you wanna know why. Bring your ear closer to the speaker so you can hear me clearly. Nobody's worthy of being the first mate, but hi, hello, how are you guys doing? My name is Hariana, and I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. Just a heads up, I have a Patreon and I have merch, links will be down below. Now let's go ahead and get into today's video because this is just a subject that just kind of fascinates me. And that is the subject of magazines. I love magazines. I've always loved magazines. When I was little and my parents would take me to the library, the first place that I would always go to in there would be the magazine section. Like so many people, y'all don't give libraries their credit. People think that libraries really are only places that are filled with books and books are good sources of entertainment, but you can find music, you can find movies, TV shows, DVDs on top of that. And then there's also an entire section where they have not only just magazines, but also newspapers as well. And at the time we was broke, so we could not afford to be getting me all these different kinds of magazine subscriptions. So I went to the library the weekend to go read magazines. I love magazines and I still do. And because of that, I've been reminiscing on a lot of the magazines I used to read as a kid. And you know, the key magazine for teenagers that everyone knows about j14 magazine so i looked up j14 magazine to see what they were still up to and then it just hit me like after looking on their website and then thinking back to that video i made called it's normalized to be rude to people this is honestly low-key a sequel to it's normalized to be rude to people because what? J14? How is this acceptable? Celebrity gossip has been a thing since the old Hollywood days. As you guys know, the original gossip girls named Hedda Harper and Luella Parsons, literally two of the most hated women in Hollywood. And that's because they always stuck their nose up in other people's business. But because of Luella Parsons and Hedda Harper talking shit about famous people, specifically famous people that you don't know, has become an entire industry in the field of work. People are making in thousands. People are making bank by talking shit about celebrities. Like what people do on TMZ, it's no different than a lot of these drama channels that are here on YouTube. And like I said, they were some of the first people to monetize talking shit about people that you don't know. And because of that, they were not very well liked. And you know, a lot of celebrities don't like TMZ. They have been very open when it comes to them not liking a lot of news platforms. I remember E! News used to get it bad too back in the day. But I noticed when it comes to a lot of these platforms, none of them seem to have this much smoke and fire for when it comes to teen magazines. But ever since Luella Parson and Hedda Hopper started the celebrity gossip trend, it has not gone away and it doesn't look like it's going to go away either because our society is so ingrained into celebrity culture that it is going to take tens and probably hundreds of years until it's not really a thing anymore because our culture is so invested in the lives of famous people the people that we go to for entertainment and not only does it take a toll on those people that are affected but it takes a toll on you stop being so invested in people's lives that you don't know unless they're fictional characters have free will 
that's why i don't really watch reality tv like that no more and whatever because it just didn't really feel right to me but like there's an entire industry that surrounds bothering celebrities and it even has a name because of how big it has become and it's called tabloid journalism for the longest celebrity gossip was mainly about adult celebrities and that is because there weren't really that many child stars around, I'd say. And part of the reason why there weren't so many child stars, I'd say, is because there weren't a lot of programs made specifically for children. Like, yeah, we had Shirley Temple, and yeah, we had the cast of Leave it to Beaver, but there wasn't an abundance of children's entertainment back then like it is now. Also, you gotta remember that social media was not a thing back then, and it is now, and young people are the ones that run social media. But I'd say when Jodie Foster, Drew Barrymore, even the Olsen twins came around, that's when we started to see, oh, people are going to start talking shit about kids. Like, it's honestly extremely disgusting because I remember back in the day when Beyonce was a teenager and all that Destiny Child drama was going on. These adults were literally going out of their way to make Beyonce look like bad guy Chun Li. I have a question. Okay, question. now, Beyonce, I understand you are the leader, right, of the group. Or the I sing lead. Oh, you sing I'm sorry. Yes. Oh. So, do you all have like arguments, like sisters, at, at times when you have, you know, we have, we have arguments, but not about um, singing lead or oh, no, 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 got no, none no. of them arguments. And I didn't forget the way Oprah was talking to the Olsen twins when she brought them on her show. I'm telling y'all, Oprah be so mean sometimes. Of course, and we have really, you know, good people in our lives. You don't, you don't have people saying, "Could you loan me some money?" <laughs> You don't, you don't have a lot of that, or could I borrow a dress from you? You don't have a lot no, of that? No, but I mean, no. I, our friends, a friend of mine is borrowing um, one of my prom dresses for uh -huh. prom, and yeah, yeah but that's just fun, you Just know, fun borrow. stuff, okay. But back in the day, in the past, and even now, child stars, specifically in America, as soon as they get that label of child star, they're automatically seen as America's sweetheart. Because I remember they put this label onto Brandy, Brandy Norwood. Why do y'all keep being mean to Brandy? She's an icon. But I remember when she ended up getting pregnant and having a baby out of wedlock, they were basically brutalizing her for that because they put this good girl image onto her and she played into that because she knew that was what it's gonna make her sell and make her more money. So when she got pregnant, a lot of people didn't take that to heart, which was stupid because she was an adult. But people think when they see a child star, they're on television, that means they're perfect. They're on TV, they're making music, they're on the big screen. So they had to be perfect, right? And that statement alone, really that question, is the main reason why teen magazines are an issue. Look, it's one thing where it's teenagers online talking shit about other teenage celebrities because that's just kids gossiping. It's the same thing that goes on in middle schools and high schools and depending on the kind of elementary school environment you're in, elementary school too, kids are gonna talk shit about other kids, okay? That's a whole other thing. When I see kids talking shit about other kids' celebrities online, I'm like, hmm, that's wrong, but they'll grow from this they'll learn from this but one thing a lot of people need to understand is that kids do not run magazines kids do not work at these places tabloid journalism is ran by adults you see the issue like teen magazines back in the day and when i say back in the day i mean like the 2000s and then like the early to mid 2010s those magazines were brutal like have y'all ever seen like old j14 magazine covers like it was messy and they be having the most click baby ass shit that you could think of and it was just extremely mean spirited because these people did not want this and now that i look back at these teen magazines the ones that i used to read up on all the times the ones websites i used to go to every day for my news and whatnot i see that they have lightened up a bit but oh there's still some problems there as y'all know plenty of people's favorite pastime is talking shit about people specifically talking shit about people that they don't know i'm telling y'all these teenage magazines especially j14 magazine they would not let miley cyrus breathe at all it was bad enough that they already she already had e news and tmz and hollywood tonight up her ass and then they had j14 over here trying to run up on that too like i kid you not like they still be checking up on her like they didn't used to talk shit about her back in the day 
The stuff is still there. The proof is still in the pudding. They wouldn't let Selena breathe and they would not let Demi Lovato breathe either, especially the entire thing when Demi was departuring from Disney because of what was going on with her health. They were being extremely nasty. And another issue with these teen magazines is that they encourage parasocial relationships. And like I said, we're already in a very big celebrity obsessed culture, but they're encouraging parasocial relationships at a very young age. And when I say that, I mean that they're invading the lives of teenagers. It's one thing where a teen magazine gets an interview with a child star, and not even just a child star at the time because I know a lot of teen magazines would have young adults like early 20s come onto their uh, platforms and do interviews with them and photo shoots and stuff like that where they're just strictly talking about their career. Nothing wrong with that. But it's another to keep tabs on these people and every little thing that they do. From who they're dating to when they're falling out with their friends. One thing I absolutely can't stand is that a lot of these little teen magazines would have like a section of the magazine and on the website where basically they would just be following celebrities and keeping tabs on everything they do. Like I remember they would label it as they're just like you. They're quirky. They're cool. They're fun. And I'm just like, no, they're not. Please stop trying to push this agenda that we're relatable like i remember back in middle school because this is when it like honestly annoyed me for the first time ever that i was reading a magazine and i actually looked it up and i ch fact checked it. It, it this was her it was lucy hale and at the time period this is when she was on per little liars and this is when per little liars was actually like you know a hot trending topic she went to target i'd say and she went and bought this little three dollar mascara and she put it on before she um left the parking lot why is this news? Why is this news? And what irritated me so much about the situation right here is because they were like, oh, Lucy's just like you. And I'm like, Lucy is not just like me because she wears a $3 mascara from Target. Lucy makes six figures and is on a very popular television show. We're not the same. Lucy ain't like me at all. Respect to the woman, have nothing against her, but Y'all see where I'm coming from? And just Jerry Jr. Oh my God, they're like honestly one of the worst ones. They're still terrible now. But just Jerry Jr. I looked on their site and they reported that Olivia Rodrigo was caught buying an American Girl doll. This is not news. Let that, leave that girl alone. Let her breathe. If she want to go shopping and buy an American Girl doll, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Like, why is this news? This is none of my business. This is none of my concern. Like, why does Charlie D'Amelio have an entire section dedicated to her on Tiger Beat Bop? For a while, teen magazines were just a place where people were just invading the lives of teenagers and encouraging their audience to do the same. Like, do y'all remember back in the day, you will always hear about teenage girls finding celebrities phone numbers and trying to call them and them showing up to their houses and shit like that. Oh, T Magazine is to blame. It encourages children to be a part of this celebrity obsessed culture that we live in and we should do much better about. And by the way, I'm not saying that teen magazines shouldn't exist. Absolutely fucking not. It's just there needs to be something done better about the more popular ones because I have read a good abundance of teen magazines throughout my life and I can tell you which ones are good and which ones are messy. Like teen magazines, they're supposed to be all cute and fun and just a source of entertainment and giving out advice advice on school and college and trying out for sports and building up the courage to tell your crush how you feel about them and making friends, study tips, how to cook even, yes. Recommending TV shows and movies and music. That is what a teen magazine should be focused on. Magazines are just not all about gossip and that's what irritates me so much because when people hear magazine the first thing they think is oh so they're basically keeping tabs on celebrities lives and this and that and third and no that's not always the case it's just that is one of the most popular kind of magazine so that's what people always associate that shit with and it also just goes to show you how negativity sells like it sells pretty well like i remember i used to read a lot of teen magazines back in the day um i can name some good ones and then i'm gonna go way into detail about another one that i just love and adore so much but i used to read american girl magazine so much really cute nice wholesome content that's part of the reason why i enjoy sexy magazine so much because it reminds me so much of the american girl magazines but through the lens of a 
black woman, if that makes more sense. I used to always, I used to really like Girls Life magazine just as well. And another magazine I really did enjoy was, um, Seventeen, to be honest, Seventeen ended up starting to get messy. But when Seventeen was actually like a good magazine, where they actually gave fashion tips and all of that, I really enjoyed it. And I say Teen Vogue is pretty well too. Teen Vogue has honestly gotten way better over the years. But a lot of these other Tay magazines, like M Magazine, Tiger Beat, Bob, especially J Fourteen, and Just Jira Junior, I don't recommend. And I also recommend You're So Beautiful Now. You're So Beautiful Now is. It literally stands for YSL. That one's a good one because they strictly even put out that they're not here to gossip about children. I really like how they have explicitly said that. And then it's another one. I'm pretty sure it's called Sweetie High. I'm not even sure if Sweetie High actually has a physical magazine, but they're pretty all right too. But I'm gonna tell you guys about Sessy. Sessy magazine is just basically a magazine for black girlhood. It focuses on black girlhood. Anyone is available to read it. But when it comes to black girls, the only time we really are the center of focus of much of anything is if our people are the ones making it. So Sessy magazine was created by a black woman named Andrea Butler, who I adore so much and I look up to her. Andrea is great. I I I, I love her, y'all. She's so she's so I love her, okay? But they talk about issues with our hair and not feeling like we're being black enough and struggling with our culture. And it's just so interesting to see how this magazine found, this magazine came out when I was in middle school. Like I'm pretty sure the cover girl was like Alex LaPree and it's funny because I was actually a fan of her too at the time period. I didn't find out about Sexy Magazine until like I graduated high school. Like during that exact same year, that's when I graduated high school. That's when I found out about them. And I was just kind of frustrated because I was like, where were y'all this entire time when I needed you. Hey y'all, so I don't want to like make it seem like I'm bluffing or anything that I actually do support this magazine. And here I have um, all the issues that I have gotten over the years of me supporting them. Right here I have Sassy Magazine's most recent edition and the cover girl for this edition, her name is Aria Brooks. Usually they always tend to pick a girl that is, you know, black or biracial mixed race with black that's usually how it goes they usually pick girls from like you know they mainly pick actors i'd say because i remember back in the day they did alex opri and this is before she was an actor but this is how all like the sassy magazines are in the back you'll have they have the meaning of sassy and sassy literally means sister it, a Bantu language mainly spoken in South Africa Soto and the purpose of sassy is representation matters Sessy reps black girls to the fullest, filling the void that mainstream magazines media in which black girls are virtually invisible through our mix of features, highlights, beauty, fashion, health, celebrity, social issues, and more. Sessy celebrates the culture of black girls everywhere. And I like how they, you know, they pick more up and coming black actors and such like her. And then they will get some that are a little bit more known. For my Owl House stands that are watching, Tati was um, on the cover and this is actually one of my favorite shoots that they done. I just loved her outfit. I loved the interview so much. And for those of you who are fans of High School Musical, the musical series, they had Dara as the cover girl as well. And for my Dance Mom fans, they had Nia Sue. In the past, they've had China and McLean. I'm pretty sure they've had Sky Jackson, but this is before I actually got me a subscription. But um, they they get a lot. It's a lot. Uh, those who watch Grownish, um, Trevor Jackson, Lyric Ross was here. If you guys are familiar with that movie called Reality High, Nesta Cooper, and then you know Sierra Capri, because I know a lot of y'all watch on my blog. She was also the cover girl as well. I really love Sassy Magazine for the most part, and I love how they're really involved with their community because. They actually sit back and listen to what we, the consumers, would like to read. So if you know of a young girl or just a kid anyway, anybody, anybody black, black woman, whatever, you think they would like a new magazine to read, I highly do recommend Sassy Magazine. They truly do deserve your support. They just deserve so much more and I just want the best for them. I just want the best for them. And that's how like the photo shoots usually go with the cover girls. Y'all, I gotta show y'all Tati's, I'm sorry. 
I just love the hers like way too much. And then they also like feature like stories that girls would send in, writing and all that. And then they also highlight other black women within the black community as well. Like, you know, the ones that have like cool jobs and such. So this is Tati Gabrielle unscripted. That is her photo shoot. Like I was just in love with this entire shoot. And this was like during her era. This is like before Owl House. This was like Chilling Adventures of Sabrina era. I just can't get over these shoes. The shoes or just everything. And then they also have a whole section about like, you know, mental health because, you know, people try to say that black girls don't have anxiety and depression and we do. And I'm proud that they do have that section in there. So seriously, you guys, highly do recommend you guys get a subscription with Sexy Magazine. It's very affordable, like $15 a year, y'all. And it's a quarterly magazine, by the way. It's not a monthly magazine, it's a quarterly. So you'll get one for spring, you'll get one for summer, you'll get one for fall, and then you'll get one for winter. And then the cycle will repeat. But yeah, Sessy Magazine is just basically the black version of all these other cute, wholesome, nice magazines out here. But a lot of people don't know about Sessy Magazine because it's so hard to find out about it. Like, I don't even remember how I even found Sessy Magazine, but I was just like, this needs more attention. But if you want to support a black business, I highly recommend Sessie Magazine. A subscription is literally $15 a year and it's worth it, all right? Like this video isn't sponsored by Sessie Magazine. I just really enjoy them. Growing up, I have realized that this celebrity of social culture that we live in is doing more harm than good. Like we love to sit and watch and listen to other people's lives falling apart or when somebody that we don't like has something bad happen to them. Like this is part of the reason why true crime is such a thing. And y'all, I, I watch true crime. I watch the ID Discovery channel all the time. I understand. But when it happens to someone who is famous, it makes it more interesting for people, I'd say, because so many people feel as if they know their favorite celebrity and they buy into it. And people feel like they know their favorite celebrities because they follow them on Instagram. They literally are subscribed to like whenever they post on Twitter or whatnot. They have their post notifications on. They buy their merch. They buy the products that they also use just as well, thinking that that's gonna make them more relatable to them. They watch their YouTube channels. They know about their past and present relationships. So when your favorite celebrity gets into some mess, versus where it's a true crime situation or just somebody on the local news getting exposed. It's more interesting for people because they're like, oh, I feel like I know this person. But if that was a complete stranger, people wouldn't be all that interested. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with following celebrities. Don't think that I'm trying to say that, all right? There's nothing wrong with buying the products that they are selling and even using the products that they recommend and such. There's nothing wrong with that, all right? But when it comes to the invasion of privacy, like what the tabloids do, it becomes an issue. And it's just, like I said before, it's just really sad to see that this behavior has been encouraged at a such a young age. It had a big influence on me as a kid because I remember back in middle school, the thing to do was to talk shit about celebrities and you were like popular. Like it was strange. <laughs> like I'm gonna be honest, I used to be all up in Miley Cyrus business when I was younger, okay? But now that I'm grown, I realize how wrong of that was. Like not just the people who published it, but me for engaging with that. And so many people don't seem to realize that this is a problem because it's normalized to be rude to strangers. But that's pretty much all I gotta say for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, you guys, I have donation links down below. I have Patreon by the way. If you guys would like to purchase merch, I have that link down below just as well. If you guys want to support me for free, I have the Progenies. Also, we started a GoFundMe for the Progenies, by the way. The link will be down below for that just as well. And just follow me on everything at Hariana, H-A-R-I-Y-N-N-A. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. Would just blow your mind Buttercup like Dylan three at a time Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt And Blossom will leave them out of their rut Cherishing Powerpuff, two of a kind Both wanna save the world, be 